What's up, Granary Gigs? Today, we're gonna to talk about bread. We're gonna make a super easy sandwich bread. And today, I'm gonna to use the Instapod air fryer oven. Let's check this out. All right, so we start off from our dry yeast in the water. And as always, the full ingredient list and direction are down below for you to check that out. We mix it in, stir it in until the yeast is fully dissolved in the water. Don't skip this step, it's really important to get a better result. I'm using my stand mixer. You can also knead by hand. It's really easy recipes. And so, but I found out that with my stand mix is a little bit easier for me. So I start very low, mix it a little bit of brown sugar in the yeast. So we're gonna feed the yeast for a faster activation. And then I'm gonna add my butter. Now this butter is not fully metal. It's just at room temperature. It's gonna be fine. The KitchenAid is gonna work through this butter very easily. Now, I like to use a bread flour. You can use an all-purpose flour. Now, make sure that you work the flour into the water step by step. So do not put all the flour all together in the mixer. Otherwise, you're gonna get a little bit too dry or too wet. So we want a perfect amount of water a ratio between water and flour and in order to obtain that we need to try so what does it mean it's like step by step adding this flour until we get to the texture that we are looking for which is as soon as the dough as you can see here starts to stick out from the bowl and just roll around um, our spatula right so we are working this dough step by step, as you can see. Now, right now, I'm just using half of the water. So this is one of the procedures that you can follow. You can start with the full water and then you add the other ingredients. But this way, I like because it's kind of easier to get to a full dough. So what I do is like get to that kind of consistency and then add half of the water later on. As you can see now, it's again sort of liquidy and uh, like a pancake mix. So I'm start to add again a little bit more flour. This technique allows me to have a little bit more water ratio inside my dough and when it's called hydration. So when I have a higher level of hydration inside my dough, I have a final result that should be more soft and spongy. But again, you can use this at the beginning and the full water content and then move on with adding step by step the flour. Now there's no perfect amount of flour and, and water in this case because each flour will have a different kind of absorption level. So what we want to do is like really check it out. As you can see here, I started with an amount that I had in mind but then I had a little bit left in my bowl. Now, when we add to this kind of subtle consistency, we can work through in our surface. So I'm just transferring this nice dough in my surface and I do a couple of foldings just like that. So I start with the, on the long side and then I bring in this nice dough inside. So as you can see here, I press it down get a rectangle shape and then on the long side I start my stew folding and then on the on the short side as well and as you can see the idea here is to get a kind of bowl consistency and this is uh, the best way for me to do it if you feel like it's too sticky in your hands just add a slightly little bit of flour um, from the bowl that you have measured in advance as you can see I keep doing it I work the dough total for about six to eight minutes. Do not overwork the dough uh, because you will end up with uh, not the results, the soft results that we're looking for in this sandwich brand. Now, when I get this um, round shape, I want to oil a little bit the surface of uh, my dough and put in, in a bowl just like that. So make sure the bowl is greased enough so we prevent the bowl to stick on it. And do not forget to add a little bit of cleaning wrap on top because we don't want to get dry surface of the dough. I will put in the Instapot air fryer oven. And this is a great option, which is a proof option. Now, in theory, it's great 
but I will say it's not what I was expecting. So this oven is not able to go lower than 90 degrees F and for top 40 minutes. For this sandwich bread is perfect, but if you want to have a longer proof time, it's gonna be literally impossible to work with an oven just like that. So this is just for very short bread. Mmm, it smells super good even if we just didn't start cooking it. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up. Here we have the dough after 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes at about 90 degrees F inside our Instapot air fryer oven. This is the Vortex Pro version. And uh, as you can see, it's good. I mean, that's the results we are looking for. We're looking for, for like a relaxed dough and we want to give it again strength to this dough by applying some folding exactly the same as we did before and if we feel like it's too much stickness just add a little bit of flour always from the first measurement that we have done so we do not want to add too much flour because we ended up with too much dry of, of bread now this is a, a suggestion here make sure that your dough is worked all the way through and then you put the dough inside on the side so the results will, will be better at the end in terms of shaping this bread so you don't want to see the folding in the end of the bread that you don't want to see any crack under the bread. Now I'm using this um, mold. I really love this mold. I will drop for you a link down below to buy straight from Amazon if you want. And when you place the dough inside the, the mold, make sure that you press it, this dough down, just like that. You want to have a consistency all the way through your mold. You want to make sure that the dough covers exactly the same all the way through because you want to have a sort of consistent quantity of dough all the way through start from end. This is where we will ended up. Don't forget to um, put the clean wrap on top in order to avoid to dry it out the surface of this dough. And we are gonna put it back in the Instapot air fry oven for proofing. So the option here is proof. You will have only on the Vortex Pro version, I believe. Put for another 30 minutes at 90 degrees F. And this is what you ended up with. Now this second proof is really important. And uh, this is also the difficulties I'm encountering here in the Instapot to try taking out because also the mold doesn't have any handle to take out easily from the oven. This is what we have. You want to make sure that the dough is raised just one inch above the mold. Now I have here some butter. This is all the butter that I just melted. As you can see here, be careful when you apply, when you brush it up, you can make a mess as I did. I just a little bit damage the shape. I want to put back in the same oven. Now I'm gonna bake for 295 degrees for about 45 minutes. Take into consideration a couple of things here. First, this oven has the heating element from the top. So we want to demold the bread and then flip it over and cook a little bit on top as well, on the bottom as well. And we want to lower down the temperature a little bit because it's very small. So do not go over 300 degrees half. Wow, guys. Look at this, incredible. Smells really, really good. It smells like, you know, classic sandwich, white bread, sound like homemade, great. I'm really impressed that we can make this in, in an air fry oven like this. Obviously there's like a couple of tricks here because the heat comes from the top, as I said. So we need to flip it over and somehow you can see a little bit at the bottom that it didn't fully grow but looks amazing looks great let's give it a try mm. excellent crust is crunchy and then it's pretty chewy inside exactly what you're expecting from like a white sand sandwich bread make this if you don't have an air fry oven you can put it in a fryer you can put in your normal oven. Amazing. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more fry recipes, tips and tricks to get the best out of your fryer, or if you simply decide if it's worth or not buying a fryer. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next.